Hola a todos, ¿cómo están el día de hoy? Espero que se encuentren muy bien. Yo feliz de estar con ustedes. Today we're gonna do pronombres posesivos. This is kind of a second video that we dedicated to possessives. Eh, as we did in the previous video, eh, adjetivos posesivos. Okay, so if you never really uh, heard about possessive or you're really not sure about it, I would recommend you to go and watch uh, the first video. So, you know, get like overwhelming about the information that you're uh, gonna hear today. But in case you are familiar with, stay until the end of this video. I'm gonna give you all the tips and uh, all the explanations and examples for you to understand when you're gonna use los pronombres possesivos. So first we're going to know, you know, which ones are they, and then uh, the explanation, and by the end, of course, the examples. So first we're going to learn to know which ones are they. I'm going to start with a singular form. Mio, mia. Tuyo, tuya. Suyo, suya. Nuestro, nuestra. Vuestro, vuestra. Suyo, suya. Now let's go to plural. Míos, mías. Tuyos, tuyas. Suyos, suyas. Nuestros, nuestras. Vuestros, vuestras. Suyos, suyas. So, these are the, the uh, these are the pronombres possesivos. Okay? But now, uh, when you're going to use them, I'm going to give you the two examples, two main uh, situations, okay? How you use them on a sentence, okay? Why you use this instead of the adjective, I mean, of el adjetivo posesivo. But first, to start, I'm going to make a comparison with what we previously learned for you to start to, to get it. And then you're going to see everything is so simple. And the uh, last example in the previous video when I use, uh, when I want to indicate possession, I put example of mi mamá trabaja en un banco. Let's use the example again, okay? So, mi mamá trabaja en un banco. And now, if I wanted to know where your mom works, is a way that I can ask you, use, using the same pattern as with adjetivo possessivo, like, y tu mamá, donde trabaja? There's one way, of course, but it's actually better and it's more common to use instead el pronombre posesivo. Let's see why. Mi mamá trabaja en un banco. ¿Y la tuya? ¿Dónde trabaja? Tuya es replace mamá. I don't need to keep saying mamá, mamá, mamá. Tuya is the, el pronombre posesivo, then it's replacing mamá. Why tuya? Because mamá is a feminine noun, okay? It's a female, it's a feminine noun, and a singular noun. Therefore, it's tuya. And then you will reply, la mía no, o la mía también, okay? So, you see, by saying la tuya, o la mía, you don't need to keep saying, y tu mamá donde, y mi mamá aquí, y mi mamá, no. It's pronombre possessivo because it's replacing the noun. It's, it's, a, it's a possessive pronoun because it replaces the noun, what in this case is mamá. Now, probably you already have it completely clear. <laughs> it's, uh, oh my God, now Maria, I understand. But anyway, let me go on about the two cases for, so you will have uh, even more clear vision of the whole thing. So, one case is going to be verbo ser our favorite verb, and then el pronombre posesivo. Ejemplo, eh, este libro es mío. And now people tell me, but why is it mío? You are female. Yeah. But it's not about me. It's about el libro. So, el libro is a masculine noun. It's a singular noun. Therefore, to indicate possession, is gonna be mío, okay? So, verbo ser, and then pose eh, possessive. O, por ejemplo, la cartera es mía, 
And then, ah, you change it now, Maria. Now you say Mia because you're a female. No, 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 no. It's still again the same. It changes because of the noun. And the other case was a libro. And this case is cartera. And it's la cartera. So it's going to be a singular a feminine noun. Therefore, it will be Mia. Okay? So that's one case. A verbo ser. And then el, lo, el pronombre posesivo. Mío, mía, tuyo, suyo. Either, any of them. Another case is going to be los artículos determinados, like el, la, los, las. Okay? And then, el pronombre posesivo. But, ojo, when you're going to use that? When is going to be this case? This case is going to be when it's something that is uh, already uh, been mentioned in the conversation. Then it's something that is already uh, mentioned before when we were talking. Okay? Por ejemplo, if I tell you, uh, esta es uh, tu clase de español. Okay? You see? Uh, sí, esta es la mía. Es la mía. O, por ejemplo, again, oh, let's use say with a bully. Este es uh, tu bolígrafo. Ok, lindo, ¿no? Este es tu boli, tu bolígrafo. I will tell you, sí, es el mío. Ok, it's part of the conversation. Okay, yeah, it's mine. Ok, I don't, I can tell you, of course, sí, es mi boli. But if you want it, and it's more natural, and it's more, uh, and it's like, actually, it's not going to say that right way, but. It's better if you use in these cases when it's already it's already then it's been mentioned before in the conversation to use it eh, a un pronombre posesivo to not keep mentioning the noun all the time no mamá mamá libro libro lapicero lapicero so es este tu boli sí es el mío es tu cartera es la mía es tu clase de español es la mía es la tuya también so, it replaces the noun accordingly, obviously, in always following the gender in the number of the noun. Esta es nuestra clase de español. Sí, es nuestra. Es suya, es mía, es nuestra clase de español. I... It's important note that I would like to mention it here. It's a previous video, actually. I keep saying that. Sorry if I do that. Sorry if I am annoying. But it's about mio and mia. I only took actually these two uh, possessive pronouns. Because, uh, I don't know as you know, but uh, we have a, a page on Facebook. And we also have a learning group on Facebook. When we interact, we have uh, live chats and stuff. Um, it's always... a uh, I always come across a lot of people really confused, thinking then uh, that possessive, especially with the possessives, are related to the gender of the speaker. It is related to the gender of the person who is talking. It is not like that. It has nothing to do with the gender of the speaker. And I know you are telling me, but Maria, I got you, because in the case of Mama, why are you telling me Ila tuya? Y la mía. It's because mamá is a female. Yes. But mamá is a noun in that sentence. Okay? Mamá trabaja en un banco. Mamá is, is a noun. Okay? It's a feminine noun. But it's a noun. The speaker is me. The person who is speaking there is me. Mamá no. I'm talking about her. Okay? She's just a noun in my sentence. And okay, it's mia, tuya in this case, y la mia y la tuya, because it's following the gender of the noun, then in this case it's mamá. But I can perfectly tell you, like, uh, la cartera es mía, o esta cartera es mía. And then you tell me, yeah, because you're female. Again, no, of course no, because it's cartera, because I can tell you, el libro es mío, el boli es mío, okay? El cepillo. Es mío, okay? And then, when I tell you el cepillo es mío, okay? I'm a female, but we're following the gender of cepillo, of boli, of cartera, 
of Libro. So we following the gender of the noun to express this kind of possession like uh, mine, yours, okay? Always following the gender and the number of the noun. Know the gender of the speaker, okay? I don't know if you heard about this before. I don't know if this is clear for you. I really hope that it's clear for you. I would love to know your feedback about this lesson, about this topic. And also I would love to have your suggestions for more topics, more classes, more lessons. And if until this point you haven't subscribed to our channel, subscribe button. It's a lot of new things coming soon. And I hope to see you in our next videos. Ciao, ciao.